Myra Hindley, probably the most hated woman in Britain, is dead. The Moore's murderess died of a chest infection after 36 years in jail. The body of the Moore's murderess, Myra Hindley, is still under guard tonight. She died this evening after 36 years in jail, the embodiment of evil for a generation. In the 60s, she and her lover Ian Brady tortured and killed five children, burying four of them on Saddleworth Moor outside Manchester. Her case crystallised moral and legal arguments over how the most terrible crime should be punished and whether the worst criminal should ever be released. It's been confirmed that the Moore's murderer, Ian Brady, has died at the age of 79. Ian Brady has died. I believe that we are joined on the phone now by Sky's Nick Martin. If you can hear me, Nick, what more can you tell us? Well, we, we, did, uh, we did know, uh, Sophie, um, that Ian Brady was ill. Uh, we knew in the last 24 hours that he was receiving what was being called uh, end-of-life care by nurses at uh, Ashworth Psychiatric Hospital, where he's been for the last 20 years. And that hospital trust up in Merseyside have just confirmed uh, in a statement uh, the death of uh, Ian Brady. The serial killer, Peter Sutcliffe, known as the Yorkshire Ripper, has died in hospital at the age of 74. He had coronavirus. Sutcliffe murdered 13 women across Yorkshire and the northwest of England between 1975 and 1980. He was also convicted of the attempted murder of seven other women. This report from our correspondent Danny Savage contains some flashing images. Over a period of six years, all of these women were murdered by the same man. 13 families' lives torn apart by Peter Sutcliffe. Breaking news, Charles Manson, the infamous cult leader who led a string of murders in the 1960s, is dead. ABC's Lindsay Davis is here with the latest details. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning to you, Robin. He was sentenced to death 46 years ago. But just months after that sentence, California's Supreme Court declared the death penalty unconstitutional, prolonging the life of one of the most reviled men in American pop culture. And overnight, at 83 years old, Charles Manson died of natural causes. The wild-eyed, swastika-scarred madman who led a family of killers bent on starting a world-changing race war inspired by the Beatles song Helter Skelter died at age 83 in a Bakersfield hospital. Several sources now that the President of the United States will announce in just moments that the United States has the body of Osama bin Laden, that Osama bin Laden has been killed and that the United States is convinced that it has the body of Osama bin Laden, the mastermind of 9-11, the architect of Al-Qaeda. Uh, we don't know the details, we don't know how this came about, but we are told now by several sources, administration sources and congressional sources, that the administration is now telling senior members of Congress and telling others that it believes it now has, it is convinced it now has, the body of Osama bin Laden. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda, and a terrorist who's responsible for the murder of thousands of innocent men, women, and children. Accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein is dead. Officials say the disgraced financier died by suicide, taking his own life while awaiting trial in a New York City jail cell. His body in that van you see there seen heading for the medical examiner's office. It is a stunning turn of events for a man who lived a life of exceptional wealth with extremely powerful people in his orbit. He faced close to half a century in prison if convicted. The attorney general saying he's appalled at the development. Investigations now by the FBI and other agencies underway. Epstein's accusers furious tonight, saying he won't have to face justice while they have to live with their scars for the rest of their lives. The bombshell development raising many new questions.
perfectly well, as you can see, with that breaking news coming up on your screen there. We are hearing that um, Saddam Hussein has been executed by hanging. Uh, that's coming, first of all, from a, the U.S.-backed television station Al Hurrah. So just confirmation then from, from there. And Reuters uh, news agency also reporting that the U.S.-backed TV station Al Hurrah um, has hung. Uh, has, has, uh, Al Hurrah is saying that Saddam Hussein has been executed uh, by hanging. One of America's most notorious serial killers died this morning in a California hospital. Richard Ramirez, better known as the Night Stalker, who terrorized Southern California back in the mid-80s, beating, slashing, or shooting his victims. He was in the midst of a carjacking when people living in an East L.A. neighborhood captured him. Ramirez was found guilty of 13 murders and multiple counts of attempted murder, sexual assault, burglary. He was sentenced to San Quentin's death row. Prison officials say he died of natural causes. Night Stalker Richard Ramirez died at age 53. You know, the man the FBI calls the most prolific serial killer in U.S. history died yesterday in California. 80-year-old Samuel Little was serving three consecutive sentences of life without parole. He confessed to murdering 93 people. That's more than Ted Bundy and Jeffrey Dahmer combined. Little preyed mostly on vulnerable women, including drug addicts and sex workers across 19 states, from California to Florida. He said his killing spree began on New Year's Eve 1970. That was 50 years ago today. Little's confessions helped authorities solve dozens of cold cases. Not all of his victims have been identified, though. Officials have not yet said what caused Little's death.